Yeah, welcome to a revision video on partial fractions which we'll cover in five minutes. If you need more detail on this, do look at my YouTube channel where I have several videos going through these this topic in extreme detail, but this is for revision. Firstly, here are the standard results you need to learn. Make sure you do so. Suppose you had the following 3x over x plus 1 to minus x, for example. Um, you need to know that that can be broken, we've got two distinct factors, that can be broken as a over the first one plus b over the second one. By extension, suppose you had three distinct factors, like that, then what you would have, you would have a number over the first one plus a number over the second one plus another number over the third one. Okay, to look out for in these two, something to look out for, do look out for something of the following form. These tend to come up quite a lot. You're supposed to spot here that this term here is a difference of two squares. It can be factorized as 2x plus 3, 2x subtract 3. So therefore, this is actually something with three distinct factors and would be a over x plus 1 plus b over 2x plus 3 plus c over 2x subtract 3. Do look out for that. That's a very standard result. Uh, next, another standard uh, sort of trick to look out for. Obviously, if you had something of the following form, 3x over x squared plus uh, 6x plus 5, Okay, the first thing you'd be expected to do is to write this as a factorised version, like that, and then you would obviously use the standard result, so that would be a over the first uh, one plus b over x plus one. And the last thing to bear in mind here, with a repeated root, suppose we had 3x over x plus one x subtract 2 squared. The standard result you need to know this would be a number over the first distinct factor plus a number over the second distinct factor the power to the power of 1 plus a third number over x uh, minus 2 all squared. So you need to know those standard results. Next we need to learn about how improper fractions come up. Now in all the cases before the order, the highest power of x on the top, the numerator, was less than the order of the highest, uh, the order of the bottom, which was the highest power of x on the denominator. Here, the orders one and two, a linear, a quadratic. Here it's one and three, a linear and a cubic. Here it's one and three. Here it's one and two, and here it's one and three. What if the order of the top was bigger than the order of the bottom, or equal to? So here's the first case we need to learn about. Suppose we had x squared over x plus 1, x minus 2, something like that. The order of the top is 2, the order of the bottom is 2, they're the same. When you divide orders of the same, you would get a constant term plus another constant over the first linear factor, plus a third constant over the second linear factor. What about if we took this one step further and we had an order that was higher? The order of the top here is 3, the order of the bottom is 2. Okay, so we would get a linear expression, so ax plus b on the top as the uh, whole, plus we would get a third a constant over the first linear factor and a fourth constant over the second linear factor. And we need to know those two results. Lastly, very quickly, how did these come up in the exam? Well, in the first case, a simple partial fractions question. Put the following in partial fractions. Secondly, they tend to come up where you put them in partial fractions and then you use a binomial a binomial expansion, so look out for those, 
And thirdly, they come up in integration questions. Um, you would be asked to put something in partial fractions and then you could use integration techniques and you would get LUN X type answers. Okay, so that was partial fractions in five minutes. The standard results you need to know. Now do the following questions I'm going to show you to practice those skills. Thanks for watching.